Okay, here we are back inside Matrix Gold. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I hope you find the video useful and helpful in your designing process. And if it is useful and helpful, please, please take that time and go down there and hit that subscribe button. It'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you're a term viewer, I can't tell you. Thanks for stopping back by. I hope the videos are helping. Uh, and if you're a subscriber and uh, viewer, return viewer, uh, my appreciation. I can't believe uh, how much support I'm receiving. Uh, also, I have saw a lot of the requests on uh, certain things, and I will try to get to them as soon as possible. Uh, today, uh, this video, we're going to talk about environments. So I just got a couple things out here. So let's go into our render uh, engine here, uh, uh, render studio over here. And then right away, uh, let's go to so we can watch updates as they happen uh, and go to just our render right here we're not going to go to ray, ray trace right now we'll get to that in a few minutes uh, and we'll show I'll show a couple tricks with that to help it speed it up um, now over here uh, you know, we have four different items so if I go to my documents materials we're not going to talk about materials today that'll be uh, here in the near future uh, but right now I have uh, white gold for my ball here I have plastic for the cone I have a plaster for this one and I have paint so we can see all different kinds of shadows and effects that the lighting and environment will have on these items here and later we will get a ring out here to show a little bit more uh, detail uh, but materials we'll talk about at another date we want environments today today is our focus on environments and we're not going to just stick with it we're going to show go a little deeper into this uh, so the first thing is our HDR map, right? Uh, of course, we have all kind of matrix gold environments that you can play around with. Uh, we're not going to go into those today. Uh, you can play it. Those are real simple to play around with, and I highly recommend you do so. Uh, but the first one we're going to talk about is the HDR map. Uh, okay, so reflections, right? Uh, the reflections basically you know you can also rotate this is probably the most important in here is that you can actually rotate and if you look at the black here on the top and then the red right in here as we rotate it the the light is changing those areas right you can see it moving across those areas in different uh, ways so and of course that cone is very noticeable and of course the white gold is very very noticeable so you can really set up your lighting a little bit uh, more detail with just this one bar right here right and of course you can come down here with intensity or, or offset and, and change a little bit or really intensity to really bump it up or, or take it down so with those those two offsets kind of uh, it, it could be useful at times but the rotate uh, rotate command and the uh, intensity command uh, both very very useful and of course the the rotate on the lighting here is the same and intensity is pretty much the same we're not going to activate any of these right here studio is usually default uh, so that's kind of those the two I really wanted to point out was the rotate intensity let's keep on moving let's turn off that let's go to our backdrop now before we go to our backdrop though I'm going to go to my ground plane and I'm going to uh, disable it okay and then I'm going to go to my backdrop I already set it up here a little bit ago so usually it'll come out uh, it'll be a default uh, of white so just give it a second it'll update but you can change it to uh, any color you you want and then just give it a second it'll update right and then of course you can go to granulated uh, let's change this one to a white. I'm sure you've seen this one on quite a few. Uh, and you can change it to a little bit darker gray, perhaps. Uh, and it, just give it a second, it'll update, right? And we have no lighting or anything else in there. We're not going to talk about lighting. I did another video on lights. Uh, you can kind of manipulate the lighting. Uh, and, of course, we have the environment, uh, which you can... Uh, have several different options here with the matrix uh, uh, presets right and we're not going to go into that but if I enable my ground plane uh, you can't really see those uh, differences right uh, so that'll just keep that in mind that when that when that ground plane's enabled you can't really uh, see any kind of manipulations that you're making so make sure that ground plane's turned off
if you're wanting to do a, a, a granulated or solid color make sure that uh, uh, ground planes off okay uh, and then we talked about environments and then ground plane right so we're gonna leave the ground plane off and we're going to uh, go in a little bit deeper here okay uh, so I'm going to go to uh, well one other thing real quick ground plane back to ground plane here uh, let's in, ground plane right right now it looks like it's kind of like floating out into space it doesn't look really natural so if we activate the ground plane it's an infinite ground plane right and you can see i have these items hovering up here but this one's down here the ground plane will automatically go to the lowest item that you have out there so if i take this and lower it down it's going to drop the ground plane down or if i take it up uh, now it moves to the box it's the lowest item so whatever the lowest item is uh, in your uh, in your viewport uh, will be where the ground plane goes okay so and also one other thing before we move on is say I have a picture here and I want this to be my render view but I, I still want to do some manipulation but I really like this setup and I don't want to lose this setup right what you can do is you can go into your uh, hit the arrow or uh, left click in your or right click on your perspective so hit the arrow or right click I'm sure you already know this uh, set uh, view and then come down here named views right and it'll give you this pop-up box and then what you have to do is just go in here and type in maybe a uh, ren render view perhaps the IEW oh. render view and hit OK and now it'll save that item right there that that view it's safe so what you can do is you can go back in here start doing manipulation moving around or whatever and then you can just go back up here to get that exact same view go to view go to name views render view boom it's right exactly back there so you can get back to that view that you really like very quickly uh without having to try and reset it all up again so if you find a uh an angle or whatever you want on your item and you can set up multiple views you, uh, you know there's all kind of so let's let's move it a little bit and let's go in there and just set up one more uh, set view uh, name views we'll just add another one uh, right here uh, render view two and then hit OK. So now I have two that I can go back to very quickly, anytime, just by going back to my drop down, going to set view and render view two. Boom, there it is. Right. Those are very, very useful to have. OK, uh, so let's move on. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit deeper into environments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my option or command line and type in options. Uh, to pull up my Rhino options, right? And I'll go to my toolbars, and I want to go to my default. I have it set on paneling tools. I've been researching and digging into paneling tools quite a bit here lately, which we'll have something coming up on uh, eventually. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to click my 16 uh, tabs, right, and hit OK. And then I'm just going to take that, drag it up, and dock it at the top. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on my object property, and that's in the first one. I could go to my render tools, uh, but my object prop tab will be very, very useful. And actually, I'm going to uh, deselect de -select environments, deselect materials, deselect rendering. Uh, I just want the properties for right now to show you how to do everything, right? So the first thing... Uh, we're going to do is uh, go in and you can add those in right so originally it may not populate you can add anything you want in here if I click on property so if I click here it gives me uh, the pro uh, object material object uh, information it gives me materials uh, it gives me texture mapping and several different uh, smooth edges that's a good one edge softening you don't have to uh, for your render you don't have to go through and soften your edges you can just click here that'll be another video uh, and then and, uh, displacement and other kinds of things right but for uh, environments we, we're definitely going to need uh, the rendering well 
well, environments. So now it populated my environment. So I'm going to right click on the tabs there. And I want uh, rendering. And I think that's what we'll take for now, right? Okay, so right now I'm in rendering uh, tab, right? And I have all kinds of stuff on here. I should probably not have, well, I'll just leave them on. Uh, so, and again, uh, you can go in here and change the color. Now, what's nice here is I, I'm in render view too, right? We can just go back to render. Well, let's just keep it there, I guess. Uh, we can go in here and change that. Should be able to on the fly. Uh, let's see. Make sure my... Oh, okay, that's turned on. Make sure that's turned off, right? You can't see it if it's not turned on. The nice thing about inside here is I can drag it and see it real time. So whatever, wherever I'm at, I I get to see it real time. I don't have to wait for that update, right? I can actually see it real time. And you can move uh, this around as well. Uh, so you're seeing it real time as it as as it's going going on, right? So uh, that's uh, pretty cool in my opinion because I can see it as I'm doing it. So I can really get more control on it, right? Uh, so I'll click back out of that one and we'll just change this back to a white here real quick, and I'll just go ahead and hit OK. And also you can do granulated in this way too. So a granulated, same thing. I can see it real time. So I can set it up how, however uh, I want to. So I'll take that in the white. I'll hit OK. And then I'll come down here and grab it more to a, a red. And, and I can actually see it updating so I can get the perfect color or whatever I want for, for that, right? Okay. Next thing we'll go to is uh, wallpaper. Okay, and we'll we'll stretch to fit here in a second, but wallpaper, you have to go to properties. So if I go to properties, I got down here wallpaper, and it has gray. I'm going to turn these off, right? For, well, turn show on, and I'm going to click on my three dots here, and I can pull up any picture, any picture at all. I'll take this space age picture here, and we'll hit OK, and it places it. Now, the thing you have to remember with this is that is a picture. It will not move right uh, and you can see I have spacing here right so if if I come back to my environment or my rendering right and I hit stretch to uh, fit if I go to uh, render matrix gold let's do the matrix gold uh, render here real quick I have the plugin activated but I'll show you something here in a second it doesn't really show it show it up for me for some reason. Uh, so let's turn this off real quick. Uh, but if I do it from uh, yeah, okay. If I do it from the render here, now I have it and it's fit to screen right. So it's uh, the whole thing is. Uh, pictured in there so you can place pictures in the background right which is really cool uh that's that's that is an option uh so let's see let's go ahead remember uh remember the matrix gold render uh, for some reason it will not show in that uh, uh rendering uh just check it out again just see if maybe eh, for some reason it's not showing uh but you can get it by just going to the render here and doing it. And then if you hit click stretch to fit, it'll fit it through the entire picture there, right? So let's uh, go back to our rendering here. Okay, we're here, I guess. Uh, and I will, where's my, okay. Uh, I'll turn that off and turn that off and we'll go back to granulated here. And let's update that. Get rid of that. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to go back to properties and I need to select on that and then just delete it, right? And then click on that. Don't show. Okay. Uh, so we'll get to the environments here in a second. <laughs>
Okay, so we, we have this, uh, we have that, we talked about granulate, we talked about solid color, and we talked about uh, wallpaper, right? So let's go to our, uh, uh, well, turn on our ground plane. Now we have a ground plane on, so these will not be shown, right? Uh, just remember that. Uh, and the wallpaper won't be shown, right? So let's uh, go back here. So let's take a look at ground plane here for a second. Uh, now, if you click on ground plane settings from here, uh, you can go in here and you can uh, pick your, this is the default setting. Uh, you have some already in here. These are the ones that I inputted for these objects and plus diamond and the white and yellow gold will automatically be there. Uh, I'm going to uh, select use new material and you have many down here that you can use a plastics really cool because it offers a lot of uh, a reflection uh, so if I click on that uh, and then hit OK uh, you will not see it here but if you go to ray traced right I can see the reflection now the red here the ball here the, the little bit of the box there and the blue and right now it's set at 150 I'm gonna change that to a 20 and I'll show you why here a uh, real cool thing if I go to my properties I can click on this star and I can activate my denoiser okay now my denoiser is activated right so when I move it my de my de my denoiser is automatically turned on so by the time I get to 20 I've got a pretty good render already so uh, it really speeds up the rendering uh, for when you're moving things around trying to get it set up and again we can always go back in here set view a render view boom and there it is and give it uh, 20 passes and i've got a decent uh, render real quick so that kind of helps speed things up we're going to leave that on and we'll go back to our rendering and okay now uh 360 environment of course there right right now we have bright okay that, i had that inputted in here uh so i have a lot uh, already inputted uh but let's go in and let's pick some new ones so i'm going to import from library okay and now i have all these uh oh what are they ah, render uh, content environments from rhino right uh that will you don't i mean it's difficult to explain but uh, they will give you an image of the background but really you're just wanting the lighting from it uh, that's probably the most important thing but you should play around with these and check them out and the different uh things that they get so i'm going to pick several uh we'll take this one here it looks cool uh and then something with a little bit bright light let's see something maybe uh studio g uh let's do uh let's do T toronto downtown uh, a couple others here um let's see uh we take that one i'm holding down control and i'm sl selecting several uh gym studio oh, i've got two one two um one two it's clicking off that oh not shift if i hold down control one two for some reason it's not two one two it takes all of them i don't want all hold down all no i thought it was control one two three four five six let's take those okay and give it a second form to update in here they're gonna it's gonna load all those in so i don't have to keep oh there you go uh since i don't i don't have to keep going back to pick them now they're all loaded in so i can kind of play around with them as i go right uh so now let's set one up uh first if i go no environment right so there it's just taking my matrix studio if i go no environment here and i think that there i can set three different environments right for for each uh, a different purpose all right so this is kind of the 
and you can click them on and off here. So let's go ahead and set this one back to Matrix Classic Lighting. Uh, let's go ahead and set this one to uh, Rhino Studio. And let's set this one to one of the new uh, environmental maps, uh, Wooden Pond. Okay. So I have uh, three in there, right? Uh, so if I click off this, click off this, and I need to make sure my ground plane is, uh, off, right? So now I have a ground plane here that, uh, you can, you know, do all kinds of things. So you can use that as a background, like you can draw a desk or whatever out there and, uh, get uh, different kinds of views use it they're kind of blurry low quality uh but they can uh do some crazy you can do some crazy stuff with it and again my, and you get the reflections off of uh, the metal right and that's really the main thing right uh so we have it set here right now i'm going to go to my environment and i'm going to scroll down till i find my active right here the ones with the four triangles that's my seattle uh library i guess that's it right there in my view if i spin it around i could probably see it yeah right there maybe maybe that's seattle's library Ooh, that's a tall building okay <laughs> okay anyway uh but if i go in here right uh you know you you can you can scroll through here and you can by left right clicking on it and you can set as global so you can change them from here too uh just by scrolling and then right clicking and then set global uh yokohama hey japan cool and as you can tell it's very very low quality but look at the lighting that you're getting off of it that looks like shibuya station there uh anyway uh sorry uh you can go in there but the main thing is is really this thing here right so if i go back to my rendering and i turn back on my ground plane right turn on my ground plane i got my ground plane back out there it's got some reflection in it right and i can see the the reflection here but we'll get to that in just just a second let's go back to environments and this is my one that's active i can sit here and i can move that lighting around see how it's changing everything in my viewport uh changing all that lighting around so you can get a lot of really cool uh different lighting effects just by moving it around and uh getting moving the lighting around right and so let's go back to rendering okay let's activate our second one and let's pick a different one here let's go to matrix reflection okay now it's going to take uh the reflections from the matrix reflections and as you can see it's changed to the that box there now you can also go back here and uh let's see matrix lighting reflect okay here's this one now right so if i click in here i can go in here and i can manipulate that lighting as well too right so let's let's uh get out of this render view for a second let's get rid of this and let's throw a ring out there give it a second to load up everything okay so here we go all right now uh, let's go to our render here okay and i took all the materials off of this so let me uh go back and oh i don't want to dock that i just want to set it over here uh let's go to our, our materials uh and what's okay so i have diamond i don't want diamond activated right now i'm going to delete it i'm going to delete pearl uh yellow gold white gold and plastic i'll delete that too okay so i have this out here and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply some materials now here's here's the thing uh 
we're going in order to be able to see it in our render view uh we're not going to be able to see it. if we want to see it in ray trace it's a different story and actually let's let's set it up for ray trace but if you don't want to set it for ray trace, just for render just use your normal diamonds not the v-ray mapping ones uh, so let's go ahead and select the green and let's put materials on here let's go ahead all the way down so we can really get a, a good look i should have closed those uh and we'll put it at white gold okay this is why you don't you want to use the normal metals because in rendering because you won't be able to see uh the actual metal right uh so we'll select our stones and we'll just put those on diamond okay and again you can't see it but with since we have the well we don't have it right now but we will okay we have this on now we can uh, activate ray trace and put this on and now by the time i get to 20 i got a really good render view of what's going on out there right so pretty much what it's going to look like for the most part now if i go into environments and i start moving this lighting around you can see how it's affecting the ring right uh, so it's really changing and I haven't put any lights out there at all. Uh, we're just using from the environments. Uh, so, you know, by adding other lights in there, you can really do a, a lot with it. Uh, so this is, this is re really cool. Uh, so you can play around with that. You can change the intensity, of course. Uh, so you have, we have right now, I believe two activated. We have the Yokohama lights, which you can change. Uh, to different uh, Yokohama, let's see out a library so you can see it, it changes it and then you can go back to your environments uh, and go to the uh, what is it what do I have on there uh, oh, okay Seattle library right so if I click on that and now I can sit there and play around with uh, that lighting so basically what it's doing if i get rid of my ground plane here real quick uh where's my i'll delete my ground plane right now what it's doing when i'm in the environment here is it's taking that image and moving it around to give me different kinds of light right okay so uh let's go back to running turn on that ground plane again so we can just get the lighting we don't want all the other stuff but if you do you know and 20 passes man look at that that is awesome uh you know with that uh displacement uh, uh or denoise are activated in there all right so uh let's continue on so we have two activated and now we can actually even activate uh, a third one custom lighting from environment so now we're going to use environment lighting from a different source uh let's go to studio okay and now i have even a different lighting of 20 passes boom i mean that's <laughs> pretty amazing I, I i love it uh so there there's a lot in here uh you know and of course again you can go in here to uh change those around the ones that are activated just kind of search for them fi find them They're, they'll have the little triangles on them uh and here's another one so you can go in here and move that one around you can see the different lighting it's giving it uh and then you can scroll to the next one and give it some different lighting uh so you can really set up quite a bit just uh by using some of the environments and rendering material with their properties inside the rhino options uh so hopefully that helps let's go ahead and just render this out for fun uh and see what it looks like. Well, wait a minute, I should have, uh... let's click out of this real quick and let's see if I don't, I set it up for those other ones. So it's probably not going to give me my perfect view. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's check my other one out. Uh, render set view, render two, okay. Well, you can set it up, like I said, uh, any way you want. Uh, but that's uh, pretty much it for this video, I think. Uh, but again, it's uh, going to your options. 
uh, object properties first and then right clicking uh, to load whatever ones you want in there uh, and environments and rendering for environments and rendering would be for this video here and let's do the rendering one time just so you can kind of get a look but after 20 passes uh, you pretty much really saw what it was going to look like and there you go and you can do all kinds of, and we had, we did not add any lighting into it at all. Uh, so hopefully the video helps. If it did, please leave a like, subscribe, and a comment below. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, good designing.